welcome back to the channel. Uh, regular photography vlog today. I'm here in the Shawnee National Forest that's in southern Illinois if you're not familiar. Uh, I made a video here back late last winter, early last spring in 2020, um, down in the, in the valleys uh, making a photograph called Arrangements and like the video and the photograph were sort of the capstone of a Midwest forestry exhibit of, of photos that I was making. Today I'm up here on the bluff tops, so I'm overlooking all that. I'm actually I'm, I'm overlooking the uh, Illinois, what I believe geologists call the Illinois Basin, uh, which is an ancient seabed, uh, and it's left these uh, really cool sandstone bluff tops up up top. Kind of unusual for the area. Sometimes this area is called the Illinois Ozarks. I was up early this morning making the Milky Way uh, portion of the um, three things to photograph in the summer video that you might have seen last time. If not, uh, I'll link it up here so you can see it. But uh, like I said in that video, I, I'm not here to do Milky Way photography. I'm actually here to um, sort of explore these bluff tops. I wanted to get up here and, and yield them some photograph, some photographic attention for a while. Um, so really I'm here doing what I, what I essentially think of as like studio work today to sort of document the process of, you know, the studio work of uh, making studies of the scene and, and experimenting. Maybe a couple years ago I was up here and I had the idea, I was really inspired to uh, photograph this landscape in high key. That's the first time that I can really remember being inspired to do uh, high key landscape photography. It's something that I've incorporated into my photography, you know, here and there, but, but I've always wanted to return here to the place where I first had the idea, where I was first uh, uh, inspired to experiment with it and you know apply that technique here if if that's an unfamiliar term to you I just mean uh, really bright images right so uh, with a, a lot of the image going to white you know let it giving the image what I think of as a lot of breathing room across the tones the reason I think high key will work here is related to like a second experimental goal that I have with the location uh, which is to try to convey a sense of texture um, through the image so that's like a weird kind of visual problem to have or to try to tackle but I really like the texture of rocks I, I'm attracted to rocky places uh, because of the texture um, I, I really like rock climbing I'd say uh, probably more than the average uh, rural midwesterner and what gets me excited about rock climbing or what makes me like wake up and want to go climbing isn't like the excitement or the um, the, the sense of accomplishment or the exercise those are all uh, cool benefits but what I really like is just to feel the texture of the rock that's what gets me excited to get out and get on rock i thought that's a really interesting visual challenge how do you communicate a sense of uh, tactile feeling right or any other sense through a visual medium so yeah those are the kinds of uh, inquiries that i'm going to be going through while i'm out here um, experimenting with this um, sort of unique ecosystem that i'm not familiar with and so if this is the last time i talk to you on the camera um, thank you so much for watching i hope something uh, that you see today helps inform your photographic process. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe, like, share. And if you have any ideas for how to tackle these unique visual challenges that I'm undertaking today, uh, I'd be happy to read your comment in the comment section below. Let's make some photos, like probably a lot of photos. While the light was slow, I made all those cool time lapses you just watched, and uh, I took some like more conventional type photos that like I would normally take, uh, which I'm not disappointed in. It's a beautiful area, and I don't mind photographing it in any particular way. But now the light levels are high enough that uh, I can play around with my high key ideas, and uh, also my camera battery's dead. So.
technique that I'm finding useful is just to um, display texture contrast. So contrasting textures that I familiarly perceive as uh, very soft, like this little bed of uh, laid down brown grasses, um, against textures that I perceive as hard. I find that that's uh, helping to evoke the idea of texture or push the thought of texture into the forefront of uh, what I'm considering when I'm interpreting the image. I really like this area here that's like a waterfall of grass splashing out over the rocks. And that pattern repeats a couple other places throughout the scene. Uh, but it's very hard to, maybe I need to get closer, uh, maybe I need to darken the exposure a little bit, but it's very hard to um, make it stand out on the camera the way it does to my eye. Okay, I'm looking forward to showing that one to you. That's much closer to what I had in mind. Um, this is exposed so far to the right that I'm clipping a lot of the whites on the histogram. Um, maybe I should leave myself a little flexibility so that I could do that later on the computer in case I don't like it that way, but I don't know, we'll see. Uh, this, again, it's experimentation. Um, but in the viewfinder, it looked like exactly what I had in mind. Very exciting. I'm definitely cooking with grease now. I'm going to run uh, around to some of the other bluffs. I think I pretty well exhausted this one. Well, I got some photos, I got some experience, and uh, I got some much needed sun. Exposure in more ways than one. Uh, I could happily stay out here all day, I'd have a blast, or maybe a few days, and I've done that before, but uh, I'm actually receiving a print today, and I don't want to leave it sitting on the front porch. It takes me a few hours to get home, so it's actually the biggest print I've ever sold. So why don't you tag along and I'll show it to you. This thing is fully, fully 24 inches by 36 inches. This is probably like the fifth print that I've ordered from this lab, and they always nail it. I only order prints when I can't print it myself, so I don't get to do this all that often. But this customer wanted 24 inches by 36 inches. I've done some 20 by 30s, but never 24 by 36. And once it's in a frame, this is going to cover the entire area above his head. <laughs> This is 
is on a Hannah Mule uh, Varita Satin, which is just an amazing fine art paper. I'll try to give you a close up so you can see the texture. I love it, and I rarely have, I rarely make these sorts of um, big, colorful vistas that that suit this paper. So I was really excited to be able to use it. Unfortunately, it's I don't know if you can see this, but it's got a big, it's got a crease in it. So I've got to send it. In fact, it's got quite a few dents and things in it. So I've got to send it back to the, to the printer. Unfortunately, that's bad news for my client. I know he's looking forward to getting his uh, his new home decorated in in. Uh, in Nevada, but um, yeah. Uh, aside from that, though, the print looks fantastic. I'm gonna, I'll give you some close-up details of it. You may remember this print from uh, I, I actually made it in a vlog that I published on the channel. Uh, I'll link that up here, and so that's pretty cool. It's a one of one, so the owner in Nevada will be the only person who owns a print of this. Uh, in one video, I made a mock-up print of it, and that will be destroyed. So his will be the only copy of this image made, um, which is called In Dunes. All right, well, I guess that wraps it up for today. I gotta get this thing packaged back up and shipped back to the uh, printer in California for our remake. Uh, so until next time, you guys keep an eye out and I flip forward and thanks for watching.